Okay, so Chris and I are out here in uh, beautiful Halliburton, Ontario, on the edge of Oop Lake, and I've come across an area right here where we have this northern white cedar tree, um, and underneath the cedar tree there's all these little branches that have been nipped off, and when we look up close at them, there's, they're all cut on a 45 degree angle. Um, so something that I like to do with tracking, and one of the processes that, uh, that I go through when I come into an area like this, um, I use what's called the, the art of questioning, or the sacred question, and I ask myself, what happened here, and what can I learn from this? So looking at the ground, I see that these are definitely coming off the cedar tree. When I look at it, September right now, and we're getting ready for the winter, I would surmise or guess that these, these um, cones have been chewed off by an animal that's getting ready to store them for winter. <clears throat> and when I look around and I pull up a whole bunch more and I look down, I see these small little little rodent tracks. There's these little tracks that have four fingers or four toes on the front and five toes on the rear. <clears throat> and they look a lot like squirrel tracks. So through asking these questions, asking, you know, why have these branches been chewed off? One, they've been chewed off because of the food that's on there. They've also been chewed off because I know that the red squirrels save these for the winter time. They feed on them right now, but they also cache them for later use. In the forest, if we go back in here, we could probably find where the red squirrel has a ground burrow or a, a site where he spends most, he or she spends most of the winter underneath some of these hemlock trees. Um, and usually we'll also find a whole big caching area where all these have been gathered up and put into that one location. So I think if we were to come back, we'll probably see that the squirrel's going to come and gather up a lot of these um, these branch tips and then move them into the area where he's going to cache them for, um, for the winter use. So we can always be asking ourselves questions and we can always be learning. Um, and it's not necessarily about finding the answer, although we want to find the answer, but the more questions we ask, the more we can gain from this site and look a little bit deeper into the lives of these animals. Okay, so here we are. We've come across another set of tracks here, and I just want to talk briefly a bit more about what I call the sacred question um, in the last segment. And <clears throat> I noticed a little disturbance in the sand, which originally drew my attention here, and I came up to these, um, these orange berries, as you can see, and there's a bunch of berries displayed. So I asked myself, what happened here, and what can I learn from this? And as I look down, I can see that there's clearly some raccoon tracks. A raccoon had walked up through here, and this, there's a couple hind tracks here where the raccoon is, has come up on its haunches and actually eaten the berries off of, these, um, off of this shrub right here. And some of the berries have fallen down. And when I look at the berries, I pick them up and I also ask myself, well, when was this raccoon here eating these berries? And I can see that there's a lot of small little sand particles that are attached to the berry, which tells me that these berries were wet when they fell down to the sand, into the sand on the beach here because all of the sand particles have it adhered to the berry. So knowing that it hasn't rained that much here, uh, but we're getting really heavy dews, there's a really good chance that this raccoon came across at nighttime and that's when it was feeding on the berries and they fell, knowing that they would have been covered in dew, as well as knowing a little bit about raccoons and their, their habits and they like to come out at night. So just continuing to ask these questions, you know, what happened here? What can I learn from this? Um, and I can bring all of this information in, um, into my awareness by asking these questions. So always asking questions, it leads to many, many mysteries and answers that come.